All right. I really want to get this mystery solved because I'm getting kind of sucked into this game, but I locked myself into this recording schedule and now I don't know what else to do. Anyway, the door closed. Slowly, they began to move downward. Sometime later, all seven of them, all seven of them stepped off the elevator and onto the bottom deck. They stepped off and saw the hallway to the right into somewhere between 20 and 25 feet from them, which we won't illustrate. The hallway in front of them was a dead end, but not a regular dead end. Balls. This is a numbered door. Yeah, it's door two. Immediately, they began to discuss who would go through it. Uh, let's keep it down to three. Their early experiences had shown them that they would meet again, regardless of which number of doors they took. As a result, there were no arguments this time. Instead, they concerned themselves with who would be sent to investigate what was beyond the door. The first to volunteer was seven. Junpei followed suit, which meant Lotus was, by default, the third member. Alright. Yeah, I get it! Jeez. Alright, we're taking off. Okay, please be careful. Jeez, you two are acting like you're married, you know that? Jun blushed, said so of Junpei. Perhaps in an attempt to hide his emotions, he quickly turned to pull the lever on the red. Mwah. It was an analog for his penis. The door opened. As they'd come to expect, there appeared to be a short hallway on the other side. Alright, let's go. Lotus was the first through the door. Seven was next, and Junpei brought up the rear. Fortunately, it took them only moments to find the dead. It had been placed just inside the room, right next to the numbered door. They got a run. They gathered around it and quickly scanned each of their bracelets. Boop. It stopped. Yeah, it stopped. Jim Jake could feel his heart pounding against the inside of his ribs. Seven and Lotus were breathing hard and fast. I know they only have nine hours, but I wonder if they did this enough for like weeks or months or years, if eventually they'd just be like, eh. Who cares? It was the third time they'd been through the process, but they had yet to grow accustomed to it. Huh, who knew? Not that Junpei wanted to. He planned to finish the game before he got a chance to let imminent death become commonplace. That's, uh, I'm seeing the parallels between what I was thinking and what they're thinking. Junpei looked around again. It was a short hallway with five doors along the walls. There were three doors along the left wall. And a single one on the right. At the end of the hallway was the fifth door. At the end of the hallway, the fifth door was covered in by a thick metal plate. Junpei didn't think they'd be able to open it. After taking a look around the room himself, Seven spoke. Alright, let's get started. I think we'd probably better split up. You two okay with that? Yeah, no problem. Sure thing. Seven nodded to them and stepped into the room closest to him. Lotus looked at the doors for a moment, then headed for the one in the center. At last, Junpei was left alone. Well, I guess I'd better get started too. He looked intently at the remaining three doors. Seek away! Meh. How about this one? What do we got here? This paper seems to be pretty old. Yeah, how the hell can you touch that? It's it's horrible. Well, it's not like I really got a choice, do I? It's not like I want to. Hey! A moon? What a filthy, disgusting moon. Yeah, it's pretty filthy, but it's a precious hint. Let's remember it, alright? I refuse to touch this. I refuse. What the hell's wrong with you? I don't want to touch it. Ever. All right. Noted. Just hang it from the wall. Well, if we're pulling the string, then it must be that toilet that flushes. Yeah, I suppose so. It's you. Well, looks like a towel. I just wonder if the design means anything, though. Maybe we should consider what the design might be. Perhaps that'll give us a hint? That looks cold. Pretty sure you'd freeze to death in the winter. No kidding. 
I tried to sleep here. My skin will dry out in no time. Well, it's not like you're that young anymore. That shouldn't really matter. My, my, Junpei, aren't you lucky? Seems you'll die before you have a chance to grow old and hideous. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you're right. Dry skin is a woman's worst enemy. Nope. This looks like part of the design on towel. You think that means anything? A uh, towel looks like water is flowing from the river to the spring. You think that means we need to make water flow from here? Well. There's no knob on this faucet. There's no way we can get the water out of it like this. If we can find a knob or something that'll work as one, then we should be able to get water to come out of this thing. Sure enough. It's got a square drain. It seems a little weird. That's true. And boop. This looks like a chair for prisoners. It's rusty. I don't think it's going to be a lot of help. Isn't that obvious? Look, I don't want to touch anything unless I have to. Lotus is not having this. Does she really not want to be in this room that bad? Then what'd she get in here for in the first place? Hey! There's nothing in the drawer. Yeah. Something's not right though. The handle on the drawer doesn't really fit, you know? It just looks messy. Why don't you take it out? So there's a mirror on the other side of this drawer. Interesting. It's kind of an odd shape. It looks like some someone attached a handle with a screw after the fact. Hmm. Well, keep that in mind. I always took the drawer out, but nothing happened. Of course. There's no way you could hide a puzzle in something that small. I know. Still. Hmm. Still seems like they might try to. Huh? What's that? Looks like there's something. Huh? Looks like there's something in there. Damn, no dice. It doesn't matter what angle I got at it from. Can't see anything in there. <clears throat> I suppose I'll come back. Hmm. Mm. Just barely see a mirror from the light coming through the ceiling. Should be nice if that mirror is a little lower down. It looks like the same height as the mirror on the right. I wonder if that means anything. The mirror seems really high. In fact, it's so high it's kind of hard to see a reflection in it. It's a sink, but there's no light shining in it. It's hard to be sure because it's so dark in here. I don't think there's anything going on with this sink. This faucet is too hard to turn. Toilet paper. It's still wide enough for me to know what it is, even in the dark. There's nothing out of the ordinary about it. Just barely make out the string for the toilet, but I can't get a hold of it. Damn it! it kind of pisses me off that I can see it, but I can't touch it. What's this? 14 equals E. Oh, E means a... Wait, the digital root of 14 is 5, and E is the fifth letter of the alphabet. Hmm. Probably means a 14 somewhere represents an E, but I don't know what 14 that would be. It looks like a dirty toilet, but it's too dark to tell. Oh yeah, we can probably use this mirror to reflect the light. I just gotta figure out where to reflect the light. Maybe if I go somewhere that's a little easier to shine light on? I'm gonna shine light on the mirror in the back. Is that a number? So if I shine light on this mirror, then I get to see some numbers. I can see a 4 on the left and a 7 on the right. 4 and 7. So if I shine this light on the mirror in the back, I get... If I shine on a mirror, a symbol appears. The left one has a sun, the right one has a moon symbol. Gotta remember this. It's a blanket. Not really a great one, but still. This side's barely enough to see by. I feel like I'm gonna see a ghost in here or something. There's a simple chair over where the light doesn't shine. Urgh! Damn it! No matter how hard I pull on this damn thing, it won't budge. Guess I won't be opening this anytime soon. It doesn't look like it's got a keyhole. It doesn't seem to be anything stopping it. How the hell am I supposed to open it? This desk is old and rusty. Just like your mama. Wait, that's it? How about this? Huh? What the hell? It's not open. There's something up with this drawer. I don't trust it. It's 
screw a pair of screws screwed into the desk right on top of the drawer. Doesn't matter how old this thing is, we're gonna have a tough time if we just try and break it open. It's probably gonna be a pain, but I think we need to figure out a way to get those screws off. What about, ah, oh, if you hadn't gotten rid of the screwdriver. Sure, it's pretty old. If seven set on it, it'd probably break. Huh? You say something? Nothing at all. Fat ass. There's a dirty blanket on the bed. Man, this is a mess. Not even a bed anymore. Can't say I don't want to sleep there. Mm-hmm. That's nasty, girl. Toilet paper tube, huh? Seriously, doubt I'm gonna need this for anything. Well, this part is thinner than the rest. In fact, this doesn't really look like it's part of the rest of this thing. This rod feels loose. Maybe if I give it a couple turns. Here we go! I got a shaft. Hey, this is a screwdriver shaft. It's missing a handle though. Even if we run into a screw it bits, we're gonna have a hard time of it without a handle. Huh? If we can find a handle, then maybe it'll do us some good. Hey, this handle's pretty loose. Loose? You think it'll come off if you pull on it? I guess it did. Fell off. Huh. Look at this. Handle doesn't really fit on the string. Maybe it wasn't meant to be attached to it. Mm -mm. So if I just stick this metal rod onto the handle... Yeah! Thank god it's the right kind of screwdriver for that screw. Awesome! We can totally use this. Damn, this screwdriver looks like a soldering iron. You think it's some sort of industrial grade screwdriver? Guess that doesn't really matter. Anyway, as long as we've got this thing, we can unscrew any Phillips screws we run into. If I use a screwdriver on that screw on the center of the handle, maybe I can... Yeah! Hey! Did you break it, Junpei? Nah, no, dude. Seems kinda weird to have a handle on a wooden drawer like this. It's a handle. Looks like it should be a handle for that faucet. That faucet already has a handle. Maybe you got somewhere else. I believe it does, son. Alright. It's just like the sun symbol we saw in that dark room. Yeah, that's right. Some kind of number hint there, too. I think that number was how many times we took a piss? No. It's gotta be how many times we flushed. Damn, this one looks pretty nasty. It's so nasty! To begin with, but the inside's even worse. Honestly, I'm amazed you could bring yourself to touch it. Ha! There's no way nastier stuff out there in the world than a gross toilet. You're a real deep thinker, aren't you? He surely is. Picture on the mirror. This one in the next room too. Maybe I should see how that one relates to the towel. Maybe that'll help. Hell, it's not like it can make the situation any worse. You never know. Huh. Looks like the water doesn't work. Doesn't matter how much seven turns that thing. No water's coming out. Has the water been shut off from somewhere else? There's a little tile in the drain. Doesn't look like we're gonna be able to pull it out of there. I have to use our heads on this one. Alright, let's figure this thing out. Sweet, got the screws off. Now we can open the jaw. There's nothing in here. Well, maybe the drawer is what we need. Jar, huh? Alright, let's yank the thing out. There's a bump on the back. I wonder what it's for. Hmm. Maybe there's a hole somewhere? And these bumps line up with it and trigger a hidden switch or something? Hey, you've seen weirder stuff. So. Doesn't seem that far fetched. Sure has a weird bump on the back of it. There's some kind of switch somewhere that these bumps fit. Seems a little far fetched though. I suppose. Whatever. <laughs> Sweet! The handle I got off that drawer fits under the faucet perfectly. Now we can turn the water on. Junfei, what are you doing? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? I'm running the water. I can see that. 
I'm asking you why you're just letting it run like that. Think about it, Lotus. This faucet didn't have a knob when we found it, right? What do you mean? Just watch. Anytime now. Hey, water's filling up. Doesn't that just mean the pipes are clogged? Whoops, let's turn it off for now. So, did anything change? The water stops flowing. Thank you, Mr. Obvious. Ugh, Junpei, I'm leaving this one to you, all right? Yeah, you haven't done jack shit besides suggest that we kill someone. There we go. Hmm. So we got this tile. It's got these red, blue, and gray lines. What the heck does this stuff mean? Hell if I know. Junpei put the wet tile into his pocket. He was about to turn away when there was a noise behind him. He spun around to see Seven kneeling on the floor. His face was rigid and pale. Droplets of sweat covered his forehead. Hey, what's going on? You okay, man? He was concerned. He'd never seen Seven like this before. Slowly, the other man lifted himself to his feet on shaky legs. Yeah, I'm fine. Just got a little dizzy, that's all. His face was pale, and his breathing was heavy. Sweat was pouring off his face and staining his shirt. He was many things, but fine was not one of them. Are you sure? You don't look so good. Seven didn't answer. Half of his face was twisted, as if distorted by extreme pain, and his eyes were glazed. Did he have a heart attack? Finally, he spoke. What am, what am I doing here? Huh? His words made no sense. What are you talking about? He opened the number two door and walked in here. Don't tell me you forgot. N no, that's, that's not what I mean. He shook his head several times, as if trying to clear something from it. It ain't much, but I think some of my memories came back. I, I, I think I've been here before. Hmm? Huh? I said I've been in this room before. You were here? When? Why? Aoi, light, Nona. Suddenly, Seven was mumbling to himself. They were words Junpei didn't understand. Seven's hoarse voice trailed off, and Junpei couldn't make out what he'd said. What the hell was that? Seven's brow furrowed furiously, and he ground his teeth back and forth. It's... it's right there. I feel like I'm this close to remembering everything, but I just can't. Seven stopped, frustrated. He pulled his hat off and ran his, his, a hand through his hair. Then suddenly, he looked up, his eyes wide. That's right. An experiment. There was some kind of experiment going on on this ship. An experiment? What sort of experiment? They were they were trying to control people, or, or something like that. Junpei didn't know what to make of Seven's story. Instead, he simply stared at Seven, as Seven continued. Aoi, Light, and Nona? Those were their names. Well, some of them. The kids that were there. In the experiment, I mean. I think there were four or five more, but I don't remember their names. Yeah, that's right. That's why I'm here. Simon began to mumble to himself and wander aimlessly about the room. He looks confused. So far as Junpei could tell, the man was simply rambling, and there were odd twitches to his movements. Experiment. Cradle Pharmaceutical. Those kidnapped kids. Was I working that case? Seven continued to mumble to himself about things that meant nothing to Junpei. Junpei didn't have any answers for him, of course. He couldn't understand what was happening to Seven. All he could do was wait. After a few minutes, Seven finally stopped. He crouched down and looked under the bed. His face registered mild surprise and began to mumble to himself again. The hole's gone? No, maybe it was a different room. There's gotta be a ton of rooms on this boat that look just like this one. At last, Junpei couldn't contain himself any longer. Hey, uh, what exactly do you remember? Well, maybe you could stop talking like a crazy person and tell me what's going on here. Seven stood up slowly. Well, it's not like I really remember everything. I've only got bits and pieces, and they're scattered and don't make much sense. I don't care. Tell me the bits and pieces, then. 
She didn't think he'd feel it. Whatever Seven had remembered, it was important. Very important. Seven drew a large, muscled hand down across his face. As he wiped the sweat from his brow, he spoke. From what I can remember, I think it was a cop. A cop? Yeah. I was looking for that group of kids I got kidnapped nine years ago. You remember that, right? It was all over the news. Yeah. I was still in school. I don't remember all the details, but I do remember some of it. I think it was a bunch of kids right around my age. They all just disappeared. Nobody knew why. It was all over the TV and newspapers every day. So you're saying you were investigating it? Yeah, that's what it looks like. And I guess I found something. There was this medical company called Cradle Pharmaceutical that had something to do with those kids. Actually, I figured that out. I managed to get some information out of somebody who worked for them. They told me a ship would be leaving that night with all the kids on it. They were going to be taken to some kind of big passenger ship somewhere out in the ocean. Hmm. Hardcore 7. Super Spy. And so, Seven had headed off to the wharf. He didn't have scars then. He kept to the shadows, and before long found the suspicious ship he'd been looking for. There were a number of human shapes moving near the ship. There were men in black suits. Many of them were carrying large bags onto the ship. The bags. There was something about the way they moved as they were carried. It could be no mistake. There were human beings in those bags. He had moved before he even realized he was going to. Out of the shadows he came, his gun already in his hand. He heard the words, Don't move! But they weren't his. He felt metal touch the back of his head. Drop your gun, came the cold voice from behind him. With the words, he felt the cold metal thing behind him press against his skull. Slowly, Seven crouched down and laid his gun on the ground. And suddenly, he felt the sharp pain in his neck. A needle. Was it some sort of drug? As he was thinking about that, Seven felt his face at the cold concrete beneath him. He could feel the chill of it seeping into him. Jeez, man. Ugh, damn it. Shit, my head hurts. Seven woke to find himself lying on a hard floor. He twisted his neck to peer around the room. Where am I? There was a small shabby bed and a dirty sink. I told it with no stall or privacy of any sort. As a cop, it was a place Seven had seen all too often. I'm in a cell, huh? Opposite the toilet was a door set in the wall. Seven struggled to his feet and hobbled toward it. He gave the door a good shove, then another, then tried pulling it. It didn't open. Well, that was about what he'd expected. It wasn't likely that someone had put him in a cell only to leave it unlocked. He'd thrown himself against the door a few times, but to no avail. I knew it. Seven grumbled to himself as he moved back toward the bed. He sat down. He sat there for a very long time. Just how long, he wasn't sure. At last, he began to nod off and had nearly fallen asleep when he was roused by a distant voice. There's over... It's nine. The voice was far away. Very far away. Seven couldn't understand what it was saying. Nonetheless, it was a voice. And a high one. Most likely a child. His eyes shot open. There... Oh, there. Ka kayaking. As he listened, he could pick out several different distinct voices. There were at least five or six, possibly more. Where were the voices coming from? He looked down the room frantically. Perhaps the door? No, that wasn't it. What, go, out. Oh. Was it coming from the left? Was it coming from under the bed? He grabbed the bed and flipped it up with ease. Jeez, son, there it was. There was a hole for ventilation in the wall where the bed had been, covered with a metal grate. 
Seven lay down on his stomach and peered through the grate. He couldn't see anything, it was too dark. Now that he'd found it, however, there could be no doubt. This was the source of the voices. For a moment, he was confused. Why were there children nearby? Then he remembered what the man from Cradle Pharmaceutical had told him. How a ship would take the kidnapped children from the wharf to a waiting passenger liner out in the ocean. Seven? On that passenger liner? It didn't matter. What mattered was that he find a way to the children. Seven looked at the metal grate. Could he fit through that hole? I doubt it. He stuck his fingers through the grate and grabbed a hold of it. Hulk smash! Yeah, how do you like that, you son of a bitch? <laughs> Doof. The dark square his head opened before him. Seven wiped the sweat from his forehead and crawled inside. He did fit. Awesome. Junpei waited for Seven to resume his story. The longer he waited, however, the clearer it became that Seven had no intention of doing so. He had gone silent and simply stared off into the air, his eyes blank. Hey, what happened after that? He'd waited long enough. The Seven shook his head. I don't... I don't remember what happens after that. I think I found some kind of door out of the duct. And I think I found some kids, too. Oh, man. I can't remember what happened next. Oh, man. What happened to the kids, Seven? Did you save them? I don't know. I don't know if it was me. I just got this feeling. I think one of the kids died. A girl, I think. Huh? Deep in his heart, Junpei felt something very cold. Seven's head dropped, and Junpei sat on a look of sadness the likes of which he had never seen on the man before. The large man's eyes blinked rapidly, as if he were fighting back tears, and he swallowed hard. <sighs> his sigh was like the melancholy setting of an old abandoned building. He shook his head and spoke. Anyway, just please don't ask me, ask me anymore, okay? I really don't remember anything else. After that, Junpei could hardly try to force any answers out of the other man. There's nothing more he could do. Instead, Junpei turned his mind to trying to make sense of what Seven had told him. The children had been kidnapped nine years before. Apparently, a company called Cradle Pharmaceutical had been behind the kidnappings and had taken the children to the ship they were on now. They had been brought to the ship for an experiment. Something to do with controlling human beings, Seven had said. The 16 children who'd been kidnapped were the subjects for the experiment. Seven said three of their names were Aoi, Light, and Nona. That was a new information. He had also learned that Seven was, or had been, a police officer. Still, there was little he could do with this new information. He'd learned nothing about the Nona game or Zero. He had no idea why they had been brought to the ship and that had been the site of those experiments nine years before. Junpei couldn't forget what Seven had said the purpose of the experiment had been. To control human beings. Could such an absurd experiment really have been conducted? Yes. Before long, Junpei realized he had spent quite some time deep in thought. No time for that, he chided himself. He had work to do. Junpei shook his head quickly to clear it, and returned to his investigation, thoughts swirling in his mind. And we're going to see what this dial does tomorrow, so I'll see you then. Bye.